The story you're about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Well, good afternoon. It's Long Haul Tanker, straight razor shaving with Long Haul Tanker. And today is the uh, 30th of May, uh, Thursday. And it is approximately 13.50. That's uh, 1.15 Central Time, United States. And I've got three days worth of whiskers on my face. The uh, last shave uh, was on camera. The last shave was in uh, Herculeum. It's the last shave that I've got posted up on YouTube, so there's been no intervening uh, off-camera shave. And so here I am. I'm home and uh, got, a, got a tale to tell. Uh, but first, the equipment. And I've uh, got a very nice vintage-styled uh, razor Dovo Let's see if that comes in okay. Waffenschmidt, I think is the uh, close enough pronunciation. It means uh, 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 weapon maker or uh, uh, tool maker, you know, something like that. So Waffen, you know, that's, uh, yeah. these are German words. And so uh, what's that say on the face? Hollow ground ready for use. Well, it is when you get done honing it, of course. And I got this last summer, uh, August, September, uh, from my good friend, uh, Matt Lukey, uh, Lukey3262, also known as Straight Face Shaved, I think is the name of his channel on YouTube. He hasn't done a video for a while, but uh, excellent fellow. Excellent young man, young family, etc. Um, a little quick shout out to my friend Bill M. I uh, had my uh, shower. I had uh, I did a haircut, and uh, the soap I use for my shower uh, is the uh, Mitchell Wool Fat soap, and he sent me a bar of this some time ago, and I use that today uh, for my shower. I've I've got two other soaps, uh, manly soaps, uh, Duke soaps. Uh, one is a bourbon and the other one is a bush beer, uh, scented. Uh, and I've, I think I've displayed those up before. But anyway, that's the razor. Uh, the soap is uh, Baker Street. Baker Street by Sterling, same one that I used in the last video. I want to use it today because it doesn't get a lot of use. Uh, and the way my cycle seems to be running here uh, for a good little while is that uh, a, uh, a trip is lasting from, from Friday and I don't shave till Sunday, and then I don't shave again till I get home on Wednesday, and it's, I'm getting a basically two shaves a week, uh, which has lessened the number of shaves that I'm getting, and so lessened the number of uses of my, of my soap and brushes as I rotate through them more quickly. And so one way, at least for a while, if I want to, <laughs> and that's kind of what it's all about, it's what I want to do. And so I'm using um, what I want to use, which is that one soap. Again, it's only been used one time on this cycle, and so I want to use it another time. Now, you may remember last uh, shave, I used this uh, premium silver tip badger from the Golden Nib, the knot, and then the handle was a recycle from uh, VP Leon Hardy. And I told you some of that story and just a wonderful brush. Uh, I like the height on that. I like the bulb, uh, it has wonderful flow through on the, on the soap. It's not so overstuffed that, uh, 
that you don't get over uh, flow through. Uh, but this is the uh, VP Leon Hardy brush that they sent in replacement of the one I just showed you. Uh, that was the second brush that Jared had actually sent me in the handle. Of course, I cut the top out and ground it out and made it suitable for putting in a new knot. Uh, and this is the 30 millimeter premium silver tip badger from VP Hardy uh, in Leon, in, in Leon, <laughs> in Germany. And so I'm gonna put that back in the water. Uh, so we got the soap, we got the blade, we got the brush. I uh, made mention, let me get my face a little wet. And the reason I chose to use this one today instead of the other one is I haven't used this one that many times because I made mention how floppy these are. Uh, and so that's kind of why I'm using it is to illustrate that. And I almost have to hold the bristles a little bit at the base to get the lather going. I've done that before. So while I am lathering up here, you may or uh, may not be able to hear the Indian, Native American Indian uh, flute music I've got going in the background. Got it. It's a 12 hour track. <laughs> so hopefully there'll be continuous play. Well, I'm going with this amount, which is probably well more than I need. Here's my little leftover that I've got that I'll scrub in. Yep, soap is cheap. And so, like one fella says, load it like you hate it and that way you get plenty okay we'll go and there's a bit of a spearmint scent to this i still haven't looked not that i'm a particular aficionado of uh of the scents, you either like it or you don't like it. You know, you so many, you, you read the scents on the webpage and what I do is I read the reviews. Oh yeah, I can't live without this. Okay, well, I guess I'll try it. Now, somebody says, you know, that the website says this is an exact duplicate of vintage Old Spice. That gives you an idea of what it's gonna smell like. But, or if it is a commonly well-known scent, like if it says it's a vetiver or a fougere or a barbershop, even a barbershop. In the barbershops that I've got, there is a distinct difference between the Dovo Berlin Barber and Sterling Soap Company's Barber, Barbershop. Distinct difference. And so, and there's only just the faintest of similarity. Oh, that's that, you know. So, if I had bought either one with an anticipation of, or especially the Berlin Barber, 
with an anticipation of what it was going to smell like, um, I'd be wrong. No. <laughs> So you can see how floppy that is. It's just going everywhere. Now it's soft to be sure. And it's gonna end up being more of a painting motion than it is a scrubbing motion. There's just not enough backbone there to do anything with by way of scrubbing. But we'll keep adding water and Painting it in. But I like the uh, Baker Street scent with its spearmint. What I'm going to call a spearmint. If some of you have ever used Baker Street and want to call it something else, that's <laughs> fine with me. That is fine with me. Well, the good news is, is that after I got unloaded on Tuesday and called in and reported that the load was delivered satisfactorily, and I told them that I wanted that next one on Friday, because, because of the holiday, how the uh, holiday, Memorial Day, uh, threw off the remainder of the schedule, or I say remainder, uh, threw off the future schedule of loads because they normally load on Friday, deliver on Monday, and I'm home by Wednesday. Uh, and so a Saturday load delivering on Tuesday, getting me home on Thursday without some forethought and planning uh, was not going to get me back out if I had just let things plot along as they ordinarily do, I would not have gotten the Friday load. And I told them, I said, I want the Friday load. And I had to explain to them what my plan was. And the dispatcher said, well, as long as you got a plan, I, you know, I trust you. And so that's fine and well and good. And so I called my assistant terminal manager um, and told her what I was planning and she said well there's nobody I more trust than uh, I'm kind of known for being fanatical about my route planning where I'm going to stop you know intervals and that's what gets you there it's not driving 1300 miles from Houston to Portage, it's driving to Shreveport, it's driving to Herculeum, it's driving to Portage from Herculeum, uh, and these stops. So you're driving from stop to stop is what you're doing. All right, here we go with the uh, Waffenschmidt Dovo. Uh, this was honed by Matt on Japanese naturals. Don't ask me about Japanese naturals or progressions, I just, I have no idea about Japanese naturals and furthermore oh you know how that ends I, I don't really care about Japanese other than I, I, you know I'm interested in trying them I knew Matt was, is very interested in Japanese naturals. And I say, how about, how about honing that up for me on the Japanese natural? And he said, hey, that's a great idea. And so far the beginning strokes here are just lovely.
So here's, so I got the load for tomorrow. Uh, I got into the yard. Um, uh, by 9.30 this morning. And the return trip from Herculean, or not Herculean, but uh, uh, Portage, Wisconsin is very quick. It's two 10 hour days from Portage to Steele, Missouri, Steele, Missouri to Shepherd, Texas, which is an hour and 15 minutes from uh, the yard, uh, which in our terminal yard is just on the very south side of the Hobby Airport. <clears throat> and actually the uh, the day of return whether it be a Wednesday or whether it be Thursday like today the day of return I get to sleep in a little bit because I'm only an hour and 15 minutes from the yard and rather than having to get up at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, I can get up at 7, 7.30 like I did this morning and uh, get a little bit of sleep. Now, I don't get two days off, however. On this rotation and cycle, so I'm up at seven o'clock tomorrow morning, go down to the yard, be out of the house by nine o'clock or earlier, as early as I can. The load is scheduled for load time at 0800. And they have a preload driver on it. And it will return to the yard most certainly by noon, unless there's issues. And there sometimes is. And I will be out the gate by 12 noon on my way to Shreveport, five hours. I'll get in there anywhere between 5 and 6 p.m. That feels great. So here's the magic. I explained a little bit about hours of service, 70 hours and eight day at the end of the eighth day, which would be Sunday morning at midnight, everything you've used or whatever you used eight days ago, uh, and the computer all keeps track of this whatever you used eight days ago becomes available to you or is added to your available and remaining hours come Sunday morning. So I returned to the yard this morning, went off duty when I'm done with all my exit stuff and um, uh, 28 hours, 28 hours remains on the clock of my 70 hour clock in eight days. And that's just going to continue well, it stopped right now, but it stopped at 28 hours. And so when I return to the truck tomorrow morning, I'll have my 28 hours and I'll get underway. Uh, so I can five hours, uh, that leaves me with 23 to Shreveport. Uh, that'll come the end of tomorrow on Friday morning or Saturday morning. I'll have, um, um, what did I just say? 23 hours. And then from the, uh, Saturday morning from Shreveport to Herculeum. We're going to call it 10 hours to easy math. Uh, and so from 23 down to 13, uh, when I arrive at Herculeum and when I get up the next morning, the Sunday morning, I'll go in, take my shower. It's my delayed morning, uh, to Her uh, from Shreveport to Herculeum. And then it's a seven hour drive from, uh, there to curbside parking in Portage. And so that leaves me then with um, about 16 hours. Well, in the meantime, on that Sunday morning, uh, I pick up five hours. Uh, what I drove to Shreveport a week ago.
So I said 13 hours. Um, <clears throat> um, is that what I said? Anyway, you get the idea. I'm going to be picking up hours that's going to keep me rolling and keep me on schedule that'll get me home on Wednesday without having to do a 34 hour break. And conceivably, I could keep that schedule going indefinitely. Uh, there is no requirement that requires you to take any certain number of days off or hours off to refresh your total 70 hours at any given time uh, as long as you are rolling forward. If you got enough hours from eight days ago to bring forward to tomorrow, you're fine. You're fine. You can roll indefinitely. And for those that have worked it out, uh, it, at seven, it's nine hours, nine hours and 45 minutes a day, uh, total on duty time, including all of your on duty work and driving. If all of your on duty work and driving are completed within nine hours and 45 minutes, you can keep day after day. You just, just don't exceed that 945. Oh, my special message for today's video, my outrage of the day is defund the FBI. Defund the FBI. What a, I was listening to a, a radio program uh, just the other day and I'm not gonna, oh, oh, I know who it was. Uh, I don't even know if I can say his name and they won't ban me. I know others can say his name, but I'll just say it and see if they ban me. Steve Bannon, War Room, uh, talking to, I don't even know, I can say this guy's name, but I can identify his title and position, the Attorney General of the State of Texas. There was a, a country, a foreign country, uh, Herr Deutschland, uh, uh, back in the 30s and 40s, they uh, had this, yeah, dare I say, charismatic. <laughs> uh, uh, chancellor, and uh, he had a secret police. Uh, they had a, a certain name. And last thing that anybody wanted to... Uh, do is to fall into their clutches because uh, uh, they were norm, known for their brutality and ruthlessness. Um, but the Attorney General of the state of Texas called the FBI of the United States the new secret police. You, and he used the word. I'm not going to say the word because I don't want to get my video banned.
Well, the verdict might come in today out of New York. Another atrocity in the, pro in the making. Does anybody feel like that this just can't go on forever? That there has to be an end to this and the, the, the insanity and the lawlessness have to be exposed with a vengeance? Oh, that feels so nice. It's just good to be home. I'm, I am a little bit tired. I did sleep in. Yes, I got those extra two, three hours this morning. And I'm going to be right back at it tomorrow morning. Which is all right. The reason I'm doing it is to get myself back on to that Monday or a load time on Friday, Friday, Monday, Wednesday uh, schedule, cycle. That's what I, that's the purpose of this, my little time experiment, hours of service experiment. Because the fact of the matter is, there's no driver at our company. I don't know about other companies, but I don't know what the order and cycle is of the loads they've got on the load board. They don't show you the load board ordinarily, unless you just know or, or come to find out what loads are available by them telling you, oh yeah, there's a Canada load going out on Thursday, Calgary. I just said that fictitiously. You don't know. And I'll tell you, it was several years of employment with this company before I found out that some of these loads had repeat loads, that they were regular loads that we did every week, two, maybe even two, three, four times a week. Yeah, we got four loads a week going out on that load. Had been forever. Yeah, you want to get in on that? You never know. And so when a new driver starts, they give him a load, go take that load. He comes back. Used to be you sign a board when you come in, don't do that anymore, which adds to the confusion. And you're on standby, right? Uh, you're a new guy, you, you just started, you're on, st and we're all on standby, but most, uh, most of us now are especially the old timers like me, we've come to learn what's available. And so we'll have our load lined up, our next load lined up before we even get back from the previous one, generally, often. But the new guy, he goes home and, and I did this for years. Wait for a phone call. It could come that same night. It could come the next morning. It could come two days later, a week later. You call in and say, uh, did y'all forget about me? No, we just haven't had any loads for you. Oh, as for the last two or three years, it's been that way almost. But it started to pick up here a, a little bit. I think there's a certain 
Well, I ain't going to say that. I'm not going to say that. No, I am no fan of communism, socialism, wokeism, and all of the little ancillaries that, you know, I, I used, yeah, who would have ever thought that here I am almost 65 years old, that I am my dad. You know, my dad was a World War II vet. Yep, I am my dad. And uh, you want to see how socialism works in this country? Go watch John Wayne's movie. And this one is not nearly as popular. Uh, of course, he was a lot, uh, John Wayne was a uh, significant anti communist in his day. Uh, G, uh, Big Jim McLean. I think is the name of the movie. Uh, <laughs> you know who else, is, uh, who else is in that movie? He plays his partner in the uh, in the movie, and that's uh, James Arness. Do you know who James Arness is? Yeah, for 20 years he played Matt Dillon on Gunsmoke, and it was John Wayne that recommended him to the producers because they offered it to him. And he didn't want to play a serial character like that.
Oh, that's just, just beautiful. Well, I don't think this uh, communism, socialism, wokeism has got too much further to go. I think it's just about burned its steam, burned its fuel. Now, how that exhibits itself, I don't know. Through elections, through civil war, uh, vigilantism. I don't know how that will exhibit itself. Uh, I know how it exhibited itself in 1773, 1775, and eventually in 1776, kill the bastards. I'm not calling for violence. I'm not calling for revolution. I'm not calling for it. Well, I sure won't be disappointed about it. I'm too old to do much of anything except drive a truck. It, there's one guy I called his name out the other day. I don't know if his, if that was part of what got me, got my video deleted. Alex something, Alex something. Uh, he said, uh, he has this nice little phrase. Uh, uh, the answer to 1984 is 1776. Oh, I saw a video, when did I watch it? Last night, this morning? Um, Jared Connerty got a uh, 15, 20 minute video up on his visit from Thiers Assard at France. Uh, very nice video. I think it was last night I saw it. And so we thank and appreciate Jared for going and making the video and having his nice little visit over there. And uh, 
We thank and appreciate Thierry Zassard for hosting him. I got a note back in the YouTube comment section. You can see it there if you wish. But he just, he talked about, it was a little short note. They were very gracious and hospitable to him. And I will tell you that I'm saving my nickels and dimes for my next uh, razor purchase. And I've thought I had it pretty well selected down to a certain model. I'm not going to blow the surprise here and now. But I want to take a second look at the Thiers Assard models. This is going to be a new production razor purchase. When I got into straight razor shaving nine years ago, and I once I got past all the gold dollars and had gotten my honing technique a little bit up to speed, and started my, I had kind of said in a forum somewhere that, yeah, I'm going to be buying new production razors uh, because they're available. And if you want a certain kind of vintage razor, they're not available. And so I got a lot of blowback from that. At that time, I even said, I'm not going to buy vintage razors. That was kind of a naive, even nine years ago, you know, I'd be, what, 50-something years old. And it was kind of a naive remark. But I did buy my first several purchases were new production razors. Thierza, Sardin, Dovo, and... But I eventually started buying vintage razors. And my first, I, you know, maybe a little indiscriminately uh, at first, you know, the $25 and $30, $40 uh, vintage razors, you know, that's a, oftentimes that, that's an easy purchase. That's not a, that's not a budget buster for uh, some people dare I say even most people to spend thirty forty dollars on a vintage off of eBay it may not be in the best condition and it may require a little sandpaper polish or whatever but I'll tell you and so my first few <clears throat> vintage razors were kind of like that um Until I started seeing, get, uh, I started seeing mint and uh, you know, excellent condition. I mean, you know, like this. This is, of course, this is probably a late '50s, early '60s, uh, mid '60s uh, model.
And so every once in a while they'll come along. Um, on eBay and they'll have a buy me now. Now here's the thing, you just gotta be willing to push that button and you know, gotta have the money. And resources standing by. To pay whatever it is the seller wants when you're gonna push that buy me now button. Well, when I get done with my shave here, on the way in, on the way home, my wife sent me a honeydew list, stopped by a couple of places on the way home near the house. We live in a semi-secluded, I'd say secluded, uh, subdivision, way up on the north side of Spring, Texas. And as you come up out of the subdivision, there's a kind of a business area. There's a Walmart and grocery stores and such. And she wanted me to stop a couple of places and I said, okay. And uh, I got home and I thought I'd gotten everything on the list. I failed. There was wailing and gnashing of teeth. So I've got to go back out in the hot heat and humidity. It's probably about 95 degrees, probably close to 85, 90% humidity. <clears throat> and summer is here. No cold water in South Texas.
during the summer months. You can let it run. It's gone. It's gone in about 10 seconds. Get it while it lasts. So you're doing a post-shave cold water cool down. Rinse. It is gone. Of course, in Wisconsin, <laughs> while I was up there, the, the water, the uh, uh, temperatures were quite mild. Oh, it's just fabulous. Feels wonderful. Well, I will tell you that this JNAT edge contrasted with the uh, conical on the Wade and Butcher in my last video from Sunday, Monday, that had been Monday morning, which was Memorial Day. Um, compared to this one, the conical did not feel as crisp, did not feel as, you know, people equal crispness with sharpness. Uh, and so if you want to look at it that way, it didn't feel as sharp as this JNAT edge. The JNAT edge, edge is crisper and maybe not quite as, well, certainly not 
as smooth as uh, conical, conical edges are believed to be or reported to be. Uh, but I, I, can almost, I can almost tell right now that I'm going to end up um, with a, uh, a good shape. And first of all, yeah, first of all, I'm going to end up with a good shape. But the conical ended up with a good shape. Uh, the only difference is the feel of the edge. And, oh, that reminds me of something else I wanted to say, too. But I'll save that for another time. Um, the thing about these stones is that it's just whatever edge you want to have, whatever edge you want to feel. Now, I do believe there is a distinction and difference in some of the edges. And so you get a smooth edge from a conical. You get a, a you know extremely sharp and crisp, aggressive edge from the synthetics and other natural stones fall somewhere in between. And that's part of the joy of deciding which stones you want to get. You, can, you know, I really don't know anybody that's got a sample of a stone, of every kind of stone that's ever, you know, um, you know, some of those European slates and water stone, not water stones, but the air or something, or I, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even going to try. Um, Like an Escher, they're largely unobtainium. They're um, not in a retail market situation. You just have to hope you can find one. What I call unobtainium. So read about what you want to get, find a retailer, make sure it's available, what you want, the size that you want, the general quality that you want, talking about, you know, the, the, the Eschers, they say the light green is better than the darker blue, whatever, I don't know. I've seen where uh, timber tools, I was doing a little checking on Thuringians, uh, which is the substance that Escher stones are made out of, um, uh, that they've got a man-made Thuringian stone. Now, I almost, almost, and I've decided against it. I'm not going to buy one. Because you can't get Thuringian stones hardly anymore. There's not hardly any retailers where you can go get, yeah, I want an 8 by 3 of that. Eight by three by one. I'll take an eight by three by half, but that's not my first choice. But no, I'm gonna stay with what I've got and I'm not gonna venture, unless somebody just wants to give me a stone. I don't think I'm gonna buy any more stones. 
But hey, I got plenty of stones. What do I have to complain about? And I get great edges. Ah, you see my little mustache right there? It kind of looks like that guy from Germany that I was referring to earlier.
Let's wash it off and get some finishing strokes. Yeah, I'm at an hour, eight minutes, 45 seconds, which is not uncommon for when I've had anything to say, time just seems to lose track. And when I'm home and relaxed, now, I wish I didn't have to go back out and do that last little bit of honeydew that I didn't do before I got home, but I gotta do it. All right, so that is it for the Waffenschmidt Dovo. Just an excellent, oh, it just, other than that last little bite right there. Oh yeah, this feels absolutely wonderful. So let's go ahead and set this aside and pull up the chef field. The soap is doing fine. The brush is doing okay.
you can probably see when I've been using the VP Leon Hardy brush, 30 millimeter knot, it's just, it's not my cup of tea. The way this knot, the way this knot is set. Now, I don't know if that's, I just did, I don't remember that being the way the first two models were. This loose and this floppy, this much aloft, it just spreads like, I mean, it's got a good, but it just, too much, too, it's too floppy. And it may very well be true, I'm, when I'm looking at a floppy brush, maybe I'm not using it right, I know you're supposed to paint with it, not scrub it. No name Sheffield. I know, I don't think you're gonna be able to see any of that little, right down in here. It, it, what you can see is just barely. I mean, it is almost so sanded over, uh, but you can just see the last, uh, I think it's, uh, I think the F has gone a bit, E-I-L-D, Field, Sheffield. The look of it looks like a Sheffield razor. But I will tell you, it is an excellent head shaver. I love it. And it, it's, I've been using it a lot here lately. And I may have a couple of more razors that I'm going to move from the active duty line to, uh, reserve <laughs> and they'll become a head shaver so maybe two or three I've got a Bengal, T.R. Cadman Bengal, that is vintage, that is not in A1 condition. Uh, and it would be a good, excellent head shaver too. There's just a little bit of a, it, the, the, the apex on my bangle that I'm talking about is just not straight. There's a little bit of a, mm, and I, you've seen it before. I've used it and it shaves okay. It shaves okay. But I don't know that it's, a razor that, that when there's so many other options I've got, 
in, in rotation, keeping a less than pristine razor in my rotation suits my purposes. Now, I had a conversation with one of the guys the other day. What, what's your goal? What's your purpose? What, do, what are you? What are you collecting? What are you? Um, what's and and like I said a little bit early on, uh, my primary purpose was not to collect vintage razors, but new production razors. I am interested in that. But I understand now, today, the quality of many of the vintage razors, and it's not just the quality that I'm interested in, but also the aesthetics. And I didn't get into straight razor shaving to get by on a shoestring. I want the best that the industry has to offer by way of razors, soaps, and brushes, and straps, and all of the other ancillaries, uh, because I want to be able to say it. I've got the best. I have used the best. <clears throat> and that's just me. That's just me. If your interest is getting by on the shoestring and you're looking for all these less than uncirculated mint condition, I'm using coin collecting terminology to make a point. That's what I'm looking for. Mint, mint, uncirculated. And some of my razors from earlier collecting, collecting, you know, seven, nine, eight years ago, don't fit my A-team, Rouster. Whenever I had a haircut, it's always hard to see the hairline, to see my, this a lot, especially this line right here. That's all right, I'm not too concerned today about maintaining. And now that I'm down to two shaves a week,
you knew the shave was done or the haircut was done when the barber came along with hot cream and put it across the back of your neck. And then he'd do something, I don't remember exactly what it was, but he'd do something with a piece of tissue paper uh, and roll it under. I don't know what that was all about. But that always happened right at the end of the shave. I say shave, I mean haircut. And the old barbers, they'd always shave the back of your neck with a straight razor, a real straight razor. Not these imitation, it's kind of like my mother used to have a bowl of fruit on the dining table, bananas, apples, oranges, lemons, etc. And they were plastic. Replaceable blade, please. And with a straight face, they call it a straight razor. There's a video that's floating around on YouTube And if I remember, I watched it. Um, why people are not shaving with straight razors. <clears throat> and he gives his reasons. One, two, three, four, five, whatever. But he's comparing it to one of those replaceable blade things. I said, that's not a straight razor. What are you talking about? Why people are not using straight razors anymore? There's lots of people. They may not be using those replaceable blade imitations. Feeling pretty good. One little more stroke right there. All right, I think we're done. All right, so No Name Sheffield and then Dovo uh, Waffenschmidt. VP Leon Hardy, shave brush. I'm gonna set it down in the water. All right, now what? Let's do a cold water rinse and then do the Allen block. 
we are now getting into the application of the refinement section, as I fondly call it. Well, one splash of cold water, that's all I got. Oh, nothing, nothing. Are you kidding me? A little bit something right there, of course. Oh, that is just lovely. Nothing, a little bit, just a little bit. Oop. Right in here. A little bit on the side over here. But on the, the upper and lower, just fabulous. I could keep going on that. Nothing on the head. We got some Thayer's Lavender we're going to splash on. Face tonic, facial toner. All right, let's let it dry for a second or pat it dry or something. All right, then for our finishing aftershave, we're gonna use uh, Club and Panade uh, Whiskey Woods. Only the slightest to sting and burn. All right, there we are. We are done. Hour and 33 minutes. <laughs> I don't care. Fast forward. I, I'll see you Sunday in Herculean, Missouri, uh, Sunday morning down the road. See you later.